Hello folks and welcome to GED Microlearning. This YouTube channel specializes on the GED math test and today we'll go through 10 questions in a similar format as that that you will see in the test. Question one, a tower casts a shadow 12 feet long. The distance from the top of the tower to the end of the shadow is 53 feet. How many feet tall is the tower? Okay, so let's kind of visualize the problem first. So you have a tower and we said it's kind of casting a, sh a shadow like that. They tell us that the shadow is 12 feet long and then the distance from the top to the, uh, to the end of the shadow is 53. So you would set up your, um, your drawing like that and they're asking us how tall the tower is. So essentially what they're asking you here is to do a Pythagorean theorem problem which uses this equation, right? So a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. So you take your information that you have from the question and just simply plug it into your equation like this. Um, and then you want to uh, isolate that x on the left so you would subtract 144 from both sides gives you this and then remember that in order to um, get rid of that exponent you'd have to take the square root from both sides and that gives you 51.6 okay so that's how tall the tower is answer C the next question uh, looks at um, combinations and permutations so it tells you 20 runners are competing in a 5k there are f prizes for first, second, and third place. How many possible sequences of the top three prize winners are there? All right, so the way that I like to think about it is like this. So if you think about um, how many people could be first place, initially, right, it's kind of like an equal opportunity scenario. So 20 people could be first place, right? Um, once one person becomes first place though there's only 19 uh, spots left for second place and then once that person arrives in second place then there's only 18 uh, possibilities of coming in third place okay so all you have to do now is um, multiply those three numbers so 18 20 times 19 times 18 and that gives you 6840 which sounds absolutely crazy but that is the possible number of sequences of the top three prize winners miguel is thinking of expanding his business and rest uh, and renting okay not resting sorry the space below what is the area of space in square feet Okay, so what you have to look at here, you have to realize is that you actually have two triangles here. Okay, so you have one big, uh, excuse me, not triangles, rectangles. So you have one big rectangle there, and the formula to find out the um, area would be length times width. So you would multiply um, the width, which is 60, times the length, which is 50. Okay, that gives you 3,000. And then you have a little rectangle there in pink. Okay, so again, we use the same formula and it would be 20 times 20, okay? The length times the width. And that gives you 400. So now all you have to do is add those two areas that you just found out, and that would give you 3,400. All right, the next question deals with simple interest. Wilson borrows $3,500 to buy a car for four years, at 6% simple interest, how much interest will he pay on the loan? Okay, so this formula is really useful to know. So you calculate simple interest by multiplying the principal. So the principal is the amount of money that you borrowed, multiplied by the rate, meaning the percentage um, that, that, that you're borrowing at, multiplied by the time that you're gonna have the loan for, okay? So if we take this, we know the principal is 3,500. Uh, 3, the rate is 6% or 0 0.06 in decimals, and the time is four years. So you'd go ahead and plug those numbers into your equation, and that tells you that he's going to pay $840 in interest on the loan. Okay, answer A. A map scale says that 5 inches is equal to 175 miles. What actual distance would a map distance of 2 inches represent? All right, so this is a proportion question, okay? You have to set up a proportion. And what it's telling you 
is that um, it's giving you a distance in inches and telling you what it represents in miles, okay? So it's telling you that five inches on the map is 175 miles. So that's how you would set up the proportion. And then it's asking you, so in, if I have two inches, how many miles is that in real life? So you would set up your proportion like this. And then you would multiply like that diagonally until you um, end up with this equation. And then divide both sides by five. That gives you x is equal to 70. Answer B. OK, so the next question is uh, has two steps. All right. This is one of those kind of like hot spot questions that they call where you have to answer one part of the, the question. And then the second part, you actually have to plot your results on a graph or on a, li on a line graph like this. So it says uh, represent the solution uh, to the this inequality in the line graph below. OK, so the first thing you want to do is simply work out that inequality, like if it was a regular algebra problem. So you go ahead and multiply that minus 3 with the bracket. That gives you this. And then you want to solve for x. So you would uh, subtract 12 from both sides. That gives you um, that. You divide both sides by minus 3. And now, this is really important, because you're, multiple, you're dividing by negative number on both sides, that inequality sign is going to flip, OK? So you have to remember that. That's really important, OK? So when you divide by negative numbers, uh, that inequality sign is going to flip. So um, once you know that, now you can go ahead and plot that in your line graph, and it would look like that. All right, so this next question looks at absolute values. So whenever you see any number um, surrounded by those, those two lines, that is an absolute value, OK? And what that tells you is that whatever is inside those two lines is going to turn positive, OK? So first, let's solve whatever is inside that, that absolute value. So minus 30 divided by 2 would be minus 15. And again, because it's inside that absolute value, um, that minus 15 is going to become positive 15. OK, so that's what it's going to end up. Minus 20 plus 15, which is equal to minus 5. All right, this next question is one of these drop down menu questions uh, where you're asked to kind of uh, drop down the menu and select the correct answer. It says uh, Sofa City employees earn an hourly wage plus commission. Wage options are below. If Joe works 20 hours per week and regularly sells $1,000 worth of furniture per week, uh, which option would give him the highest pay? OK, so basically what you have to do here is you have to go through each of the wage options. And we know that his total pay would be um, his hourly rate, which is the first column. OK. Uh, multiplied by the hours worked, plus whatever percent commission he gets on sales, multiplied by whatever sales he made. OK, so in this case, um, the hourly rate is 8 hours, multiplied by 20, which they tell us in the question. Commission rate is 2%, or 0 0.02 in decimals, and multiplied by $1,000, which is what they tell us in the question that he sold. So in this case, he would get $180. So that's option A. If we look at option B, do the same sort of thing, plotting in the new values for uh, hourly rate and commission. And he gets 200. Uh, so <coughs> option C, he has a lower ba uh, pay rate, but a higher commission. Plot the numbers in. He gets 180. And then the final one, he has a really low commission um, percentage, but he has a high um, hourly wage. OK, so if you plot those numbers in, you can see that he end up, ends up making uh, much more money. OK, it's 305. Um, hold on, I think I made a mistake. 15 times 20. Yeah, OK, so 15 times 20 should be 300. 
plus five dollars is three hundred uh, three oh five dollars okay so the best option for him would be option D okay question nine so this is a fill in the blank question which does uh, requires you to know about order of operations so it says uh, solve the equation below and write the answer in the square so remember whenever you have these like really messy equations what they want you to do is to follow the order of operations um, and to remember that there's this acronym called PEMDAS okay so PEMDAS tells you in what order you're doing the different operations so you would start out with the parentheses the E stands for exponents M multiplication D division A add S subtract okay so let's go take it step by step so let's work with the brackets first and solve that stuff first so 17 minus 12 is 5 and then we're gonna um, and then 25 minus 5 is 20 okay so if we go ahead and solve for that that would give us that amount which is 125 multiplied by 2 so 250 okay so make sure that you always follow the correct order all right question 10 is a two-part question so it says Lisa adds a chemical to her pool once a week the instructions to her add one scoop of the product for every 30 cubic feet of water how many scoops should she add per week okay and it's giving you the the pool there in the image all right so the first thing that you have to do is we have to find out how the volume of that pool okay and for that you would find out the formula for the volume of a cylinder shaped object right um, this is provided for you in the test so that's the formula so you would plug in the numbers from the question so the radius is half of the diameter so uh, it would be 7 because that's half of 14 um, plot those numbers in you end up with that volume for the pool okay the second thing that you want to do is now that you know the volume of the pool is to set up a proportion so they've told us that one scoop of water excuse me one scoop of product is used for every 30 cubic feet of water and we know that she has um, that's the volume of her pool 769 and they're asking us for how many scoops would you use uh, for that amount of water so you would set up your proportion like this and then remember that you have to multiply diagonally as such that gives you 3x is equal to 769 divide both sides by 30 and that gives you 25.6 scoops which is answer D all right folks so that's it for today thank you so much for your time and for watching uh, please consider subscribing if you found any value and signing up for those bell notifications or sharing with friends as always thank you so much for your time and have a great rest of your day see you next week